All right, guys, so my name is Fernando, and I'm gonna show you today how to turn this into this, which is a tripod that has a few driver wheels that we can actually uh, automatically do time lapses where the camera is moving for very long distances. So check this out. All right, so I already pre-assembled here the the main uh, sub-assembly. Actually, let's have a look at it. So this one is the wheel. Uh, so you can see that it's just a uh, disprinted part here. Uh, we actually assembled two hinges, so they kind of have this nice clamping mechanism. And then I just uh, kind of uh, hammer a shaft. And if you see here, there's a little uh, spacer, you know, between the shaft and the Sorry, between between the end stop and the bearing and then the wheel itself is already also pre-assembled as you can see here there's it's actually two halves that were printed and then uh, it forms a wheel so now it spins pretty nicely so we actually we have two of them so here is the second wheel and we're gonna put the wheels in the tripod legs so let me extend the tripod legs so we can actually so these are because we we need to clamp the wheels, right? So so I extended the tripod legs so it can actually fit the wheel. So as you can see here, let me actually put the tripod the tripod flat, and as you can see, the clamp nicely embraces and when you bolt it up together it's going to be nice and sturdy and this basically uh, is going to be act as the end stop so it's even if the friction doesn't hold it up this like it could actually slide you know like it could actually slide but then eventually it's going to stop so that's why i'm i only extended this much and of course there's also the other issue which is if it's extended more than the wheel the wheel doesn't really work right so you kind of have to be aware of that Cool. So as you can see, it's nice and sturdy. It's not moving. So now we're gonna shift to the next leg. And as you can see, it's pretty sturdy. So now, of course, we have the two wheels of the tripod and I'm gonna just uh, show from the top view, you can see that the wheels are aligned okay so now that we put all the two wheels now we have uh, we we're gonna we just need the, the driver wheel right so this is my little driver wheel assembly and as you can see here there's this a uh, swivel plate that uh, I can kind of uh, release this screw and this enables it to spin which enables us to make a curve or like maneuver the tripod with some given radius. So I'm just gonna uh, put this, uh, screw this back in, just so I can assemble it. And as you can see here, it's a very simple assembly. So it's like a little uh, structure that holds the stepper, a bearing on this side, a bearing on this side, and then the main shaft that runs the wheel, the wheel is actually attached to the shaft through this bolt. So you can see there's a little screw here. And then we have a coupler for the, for the motor. So I'm gonna just connect this guy here, And we are good to go. So as you can see now, I'm gonna I can put this up, and it is nicely, you know, moving back and forth. And now we have the power to actually drive it, and we just need the circuits, right? So I built a little a little board here that basically has an Arduino Nano, an A4988, which is a stepper driver, and a Bluetooth module, a HC05 Bluetooth module. And then of course there's a you know few connections that you have to do those are very simple and with this 
we can uh, these are all indestructible uh, we can uh, just uh, put this all in a little kind of box box it up just to for protection sake and um, uh, before we box it up let me connect the actual stepper to this connection here then we can actually put it in the box and slide it in here oops we have this uh, divot here and we are pretty much good to go the only thing that we need now is power so i have these uh, two 18 650 cells this actually is a scrap from a laptop battery and it kind of uh, embraces over here hugs here and then when we connect here we already have the device ready to go and now i'm going to switch to the app so you can see how the app looks like and how the connection actually looks like all right so I think we are ready to go. So here I'm gonna leave this a uh, this a little screen here. So now the motor is on, and we have the connection through Bluetooth. You can see here that uh, my device no HCO5, which is uh, this this guy here, and this is uh, basically it's already con paired. Uh, if you if you don't know how to pair to HCO5, I'm gonna just forget it so you can kind of see the process. So I'm gonna, it's looking for available devices. ACO5 is here. It has this default password, which is one, two, three, or four. And uh, you do the pairing and it pairs up. So now that it's paired up, now I can fire up my little tripod app. And this is a, the app that I built specifically for this. Uh, you, uh, unfortunately it's 25 bucks to put it in the app, app store. So I, and I don't really build apps. So it's, uh, I, I just have the APK in the, in the instructable but um, uh, if you don't want to use the app it's fine I mean you can also pro just program the Arduino so I can go here in select Bluetooth device define the device and now you see the icon change to blue so now we're connected and we have here this uh, this big stepper driver icon and when we click here it's uh, it's already moving but of course you see that the motor speed is defined as one meter per hour which is extremely slow so if we increase here the speed to something perhaps oops it's a it's moving a little because i didn't actually attach the screw but you can see now i'm moving a little faster and it's like slowly moving all right and we can go all the way to very high speeds and of course it's going to go off the table so let's not do that so that's a uh, that's one. Let me actually put this back a little, so you can see more features as I talk. So, the other interesting part of this app is that we can do what I'm calling here a stop and go drive style, and this is useful for when you're doing time lapses in during the night. And I'm still yet to do one, where you need a long exposure picture, right? So you don't want the, the device or the tripod moving while the camera is exposing. So then we have this uh, timer here that we can wait for. So I'm gonna put like a wait for, I don't know, like a 30 seconds, uh, let's, let's do ten, uh, 10 seconds for now. Let's say that this exposure time in the intervalometer is 10 seconds. And then of course we have to you know drive for a little bit. So let's, let's hit it to drive for two seconds. So then uh, it calculates automatically here the drive speed. And you can see here this nice square wave so the square wave basically defines, you know, okay, so you drive for two seconds and then you wait for 10 seconds. And we can increase the speed and we can actually turn it on. So when I press the switch, you're going to see that now, let me move the tripod. Now it's waiting, right? And once the timer sets off to 10 seconds, then it's going to move for two seconds and it's going to wait. And then your camera can actually expose in this time. And you can even wait, you know, like an extra second for, you know, waiting the camera, uh, the shaking of the tripod to stop. And yeah, so this is a very useful feature that can be used, you know, like for very long exposure pictures. So it's a very simple app and I, I hope it's useful for someone else. So this is the driver wheel in the field actually operational. And as you can see, it's approaching very slowly the divot in the pavement you see like there's a little dip and but it makes it just fine and as long as those uh, bumps are not too big 
it's uh it's still it's gonna make them but if they're too tall then it's it's kind of an issue and this is how it looks like from the rear wheel and you can see here that it also you know goes down in the trough and gets kind of gets stuck a little bit in the trough and this actually is bad when the tripod is uh, completely extended because it stretches the tripod a little bit and it makes for a shakier footage and finally we're going to look at the point of view of the camera itself so um, you can see that the camera is uh, slowly moving of course i'm recording this with my hand so my hand is also shaking a little uh, but the camera is definitely shaking a little bit so you definitely don't want to do any long exposures with this but that's why there's this uh intermittent driving feature in the app and i thought it was going to go to be good to do a little comparison of how the footage looks like before processing so in the left hand you can see the before processing and then on the right hand side the processed footage with uh, the adobe premiere um, warp stabilizer filter so it's quite a big difference and it compensates for all this shakiness of the motion of the camera but of course you kind of have to have a little bit bigger resolution in order to allow for warp stabilizer to actually account for it Okay, so this is, uh, I think it covers everything, and I hope this gets exci you excited. I'm going to leave you with a little bit more footage, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.